Hey, didn't see you there. Welcome to Rat Time Customs. Hey, do you like candy? So do I. That's why I got this and this. But also along with this, 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 and this. So I can paint the guitar that I'm raffling off at this year's AZ Rockabilly Bash. Now, the subscribers may be thinking, what is this guitar stuff? This is a car channel. Well, I also play guitar, and bass, and drums, and have the voice of an angel. So, this also isn't my first rodeo when it comes to customizing guitars. I've been customizing my own guitars for many, many years. Uh, anything from a Stratocaster like this guy right here, uh, uh, right? or another Stratocaster like this one right here. Huh? Yeah. To the first one I ever built for myself, which is what I call my Metal Billy guitar. So it's a BC Rich with uh, TV Jones Magnetron pickups. It's been doweled, the switch has been moved. I've got a Bigsby on there with a little extra piece that I made back in here. And if anybody likes this color, this is called Fire Mist Lime Pearl. It is my favorite green. That is, I love this guitar. You love it or hate it, I love it. I don't care if you hate it. Now I was in a bit of a time crunch. From the time that the guitar shipped from the fret wire and arrived at my doorstep, I had exactly one week to take a box from the doorstep, paint it, put it all together, do all the other fun stuff like, you know, fret job, making sure the neck's straight, all the wiring, swapping out the pickups, adding a kill switch, because I just recently realized kill switches are super fun to play with. Um, I had a week to get it all done. And because of that, I did not have time to talk to the camera and show you what I'm doing. So I just videoed everything and I overdubbed it. I apologize for that. I know sometimes it gets boring, but I did speed up the video in a lot of spots. So the first coat of, let's say, primer, right? So the first coat of primer, I'll show you how I lay it on normal, and then the next coat will be sped up times five. Then we're gonna go to our base coat, which this is Warm Beer Base from Lil Daddy Roth. I will have a link to his website uh, below. But uh, this is your base coat, and so this gives you your first color. Uh, this is a very light gold color. Then we go on to our flake. Uh, same thing, Lil Daddy Roth. This is warm beer flake to go with warm beer base. Uh, remember when you're doing, uh, when you're working with candies, that if you have a lot of things that you're planning on, on doing candy paint jobs on, and it's not always going to be gold, let's say, then you could go ahead and get, they have one called Surfite Silver. You can get Surfite Silver and then you can shoot candies over that and you know it's just going to have a different effect. So just remember that, that these sit at the very bottom and a transparent color goes on top of them. So uh, this I bought quite a bit of because I'm actually going to use the same color on my Harley. So after you have your flake laid out, you've got candy. So I've got two different candies here. I've got this candy is for the back and the sides of the guitar and up the neck. This candy is for the face of the guitar. This is Tropicali, which is a orange, almost a mango, if you will. And the more coats you lay of this, the darker it will get. This is gold fashioned candy, and this is for the, the face of the guitar. So when it's done, it's almost gonna look like uh, Tequila Sunrise, if you will. And once you've got all your color, your candy, everything set, colors are done, then it's time to clear coat. Make sure you grab this. This is 2K clear coat. Don't get 1K, get 2K. What makes it 2K is it's two parts. So there is a hardener inside. So in order to activate the hardener, you pull this red cap off the top, you put it on this nozzle down at the bottom, you smack it, and it releases the hardener into the paint. They say you only have about 48 hours of use with this can. But I had an emergency situation like four days later, like the day before I had to raffle the guitar. 
and it still worked. So just don't, just don't bank on that. Try to use this as quickly as you can after you've punctured the bottom and let the hardener in. So I think that covers pretty much everything here. Um, let's start painting a guitar. This is how the guitar arrived from the fret wire. The body, neck, hardware, and electronics were all individually wrapped. There were no dings, dents, or scratches. This one is the hollow body electric guitar kit that retails for $285. Now looking at it, it's a good looking guitar. There are some areas where the binding pops up a little bit, but those will get sanded down. But the main problem is it's not sparkly enough. The metal flake will take care of that. I'm going to start by sanding the guitar by hand with 320 grit sandpaper. It does look like it has a very thin coat of a clear sealer over the wood. I'm going to knock all that back out and then it'll get primered. I'll go over the reasoning why later. But if you've never done this before, then you probably want to use a soft block to keep it nice and flat. I sand all the time. I'm fairly good at doing this without a block. Now you'll also notice that I'm doing this following the grain. If this was going to just stay sealed, then you really don't have to worry about it because I'm going back down to the wood, you want to follow the wood grain. If you look closely, you can see how the top of the binding of this F-hole sticks up just a little bit. So that's one of the things that I'm sanding down. Now I'm going to fire up the old arm sander and really have at it. Not only am I cleaning up the bindings, um, I'm also just kind of going over the shape of the guitar and feeling it out. I want the contour to remain the same all the way across and this I feel is a fairly important thing to do. Um, a lot of people don't like sanding guitars. This is one of my favorite things to do because you really are dialing it in and you're creating your base of how the rest of your guitar is going to turn out. So make sure you start strong. Don't just focus on the paint part. Get all your prep and your finishing work done because as any body and paint person will tell you, it's all in the prep and the finish work. Also, because this is an arch top guitar and it crowns in the center, and also has a lot of contours going up and down and back around, etc., etc., um, I don't like using a power sander for this. I like to do everything by hand. Um, I did have some issues up in here where the neck pocket is as far as the binding went, so I was able to get the binding to come back down and then sand it smooth. It did leave a little bit of a residue onto the binding, so this will just wipe off with some uh, wax and grease remover. It's no big deal. Now speaking of the binding, I'm not a huge fan of the black and white pinstripe look, so I'm going to end up painting over this side of the binding and then I can go back and hand carve the thickness that I prefer to just leave it the one white color. Sanding the sides, same process, I'm using 320 grit sandpaper by hand. I'm also going all the way over onto the binding. Now some people may want to mask the binding. I like sanding it because what's going to happen is when I start painting this guitar and it's taped up, I know that any paint that might seep through is going to stick to that binding and then I can carve it back off. If not, it could peel and then actually peel into the part that is supposed to have paint on it. So I prep everything like everything's going to get painted and then I fix it later. Same thing as I did on the front. The only difference here and why I left it is because you can kind of see the direction that my hand is traveling. If you're not going to use a block and you're just going to do it by hand, you'll notice that my hand is going diagonal. You don't want to go with your fingers forward and backward. You want to keep them as sideways as possible because you don't want to create finger grooves. Now that the sanding's all complete, it's time to prep this and get it ready for some primer. I use Prep All Wax and Grease Remover along with the Pro Sprayer just to make life a little easier. Now I'll wipe this a little heavier than I would like a body panel because you want it to get into the wood grain. You want to make sure everything is out of the wood. Now as I said earlier, I don't really care for the black and white pinstriping on the face of the guitar. I do like the solid white down the side. So I'm going to take my fine line tape and I'm going to follow the edge of the binding only across the sides and just leave the front exposed.
This is another one of those all in the prep work times. I'm taking my fine line and I'm carefully going back and forth making sure that I'm just covering the binding and not the sides of the guitar. If you get one where you think you might have gotten it a little wonky, pull it back up and do it again. You're just going to hate it if you end up having a little bit of blow through of wood or you get too much paint on your binding and now you're having an issue scraping it back off. If you've never done this before, it might start getting frustrating and you may just say, screw it, I give up, this is close enough. Don't do that. If, even if you have to do this 10 times, you're going to like the payoff. So get it as close as humanly possible to just being on the binding so you have a nice clean line when it's time to paint. Also while on the subject of masking, don't forget to tape up your neck pocket. You don't want paint in there, you want to be a good wood on wood contact when you go to bond them together. Now that I've finished all the masking that I want to do on this guitar, it's time to just wipe it down, make sure it's all clean, you're not going to have fingerprints, they're going to cause a paint reaction. You'll also notice too that the binding on the F holes is not masked. I'm going to go back and hand carve those as well. Now it's primer time. So I'm using Rust-Oleum filler primer. I picked up at a local AutoZone. You can also get it on Amazon. Um, I'm just gonna do a light mist coat, starting at the sides of the body, and then I'll work my way up to the top of the body. You want a nice thin tack coat. So you can see here, I'm just kind of dusting the primer onto it. The primer will then kind of absorb into the wood and it'll be a little bit tacky so that the following layer of primer will stick very well. Now because the sealer was sanded off, wood will start popping up underneath the primer. So we'll just go back, sand those off and primer it again. So now I'm going to take and lay my second coat of primer. My second coat is going to be a much heavier coat. I'm keeping it nice and uniform, trying to get as much primer as I can onto the body that isn't going to cause a problem with any reactions, drips, or just having too much primer. So you'll see here how I'm shooting it. We've got a nice uniform base here and it does kind of get a little grainy towards the center and this is why it's more wood popping back up again don't worry just sand it and do it again once the primer is all nice and laid out I will then sand it with 800 grit but first I'm gonna mask it up I'm also gonna mask my table so that any dust debris anything that was sitting on that table from sanding isn't going to blow into the paint also, when I go and switch and I start painting the face of the guitar, I'm going to rewrap it again because I don't want any metal flake that may have fallen off to get onto it. So now that all the masking is taken care of, I then went and sanded it with 800 grit sandpaper and then gave it another wipe down with my prep ball. So now it's time to apply the base coat. Once again, this is warm beer base coat from Lil Daddy Rock. And you can pretty much choose whatever combination you want with your base coat, metal flake, and your candy. Um, this one I just stayed with the gold, which is the same I'll do on the front, the only difference being the candy color. You have options when it comes to shooting base coats and then flakes and then candies because you could use a black base coat and then a silver flake, which makes the flake very prominent, and then you could just candy it and that's the color it will be. Now because the primer dried and I had to sand it again, that means that we have a dry product which requires a tack coat. So you'll see the light tack coat and it's not covering a whole lot because this is just a tack coat. So you can see here how lightly it is laid onto the guitar. So don't overdo your first coat. You want your next coat to stick to this one. After shooting my tack coat, I waited about 10 minutes and then it was time to start laying on my first full coat. If you look at the spray, I'm overlapping it about 50% over itself as I go across. If you don't do that and you just go fan end to fan end, then you end up with what's called tiger striping. You don't want that. So make sure you overlap your paint. And you're just trying to put on a nice smooth coat. Now I'm on to my second coat of base. Same thing, I'm hitting it a little harder and I'm just making sure that I get as much paint as I can without making it run and I'm overlapping my layers. Now this is after four coats of base coat. 
You'll also notice that you can still see the wood grain, which is why I didn't lay a lot of primer onto this guitar. The metal flake is going to fall into that and you'll be able to see some of it through the candy, causing a metallic wood grain. Now that the base coat's laid, it's time for the fun part, and that's the flake. Once again, this is warm beer flake over warm beer base coat. And once again, if you really want your flake to stand out, then use a lighter color flake than you did for your base coat. I stuck with the gold flake over the gold base because I feel it looks a lot more classy as opposed to a bass boat. One thing I should have mentioned earlier, wear a respirator or at least some sort of a mask. This is automotive finishing and it can jack up your lungs pretty bad. This is my final coat of flake, so I'm going to go ahead with my flashlight on my phone and go over it and just make sure everything is uniform. And this is what five coats of flake looks like on top of gold base coat. And now it's candy time. Once again, this is the back and the sides of the guitar. So this is Lil Daddy Ross Tropicali candy over the gold base and gold flake. Something you may notice while I candy the sides of this guitar is how the overspray goes up and over and it hits the side of where the body starts to arch in the center. That could be a cool effect if that's something that you wanted to do. You would just keep going back over the sides and not shoot the back of the guitar. And then that candy would keep accumulating in that area and cause it to actually look more uh, recessed or popped out than it really is. You'll also notice that as I'm shooting this, I'm going with my 50% overlap and you can see that it is kind of splotchy as it's laying down. That's okay because this is going to get many coats of candy, therefore it'll all eventually even out and you can kind of control it within those coats to make it lay out as nicely as you want. Now for another coat of candy. This is laid on just the same, but sped up times five. Also, on every coat I shoot on this guitar, I'm waiting 10 to 15 minutes in between coats. So this is how we're looking after five coats of Tropicali candy over gold flake and gold base. You'll see it does have a little bit of a texture to it, a little bit of an orange peel. It's because you're painting over flake. Don't worry, you'll clear it and it'll be fine. But if you'll notice too, you can actually see the wood grain where the flake and the candy fell into it, which you will see when it's all clear coated and done. Speaking of clear coat, it's time to clear it. And once again, make sure you get 2K clear so that you have to pull this off the lid, pop it into the bottom nozzle and release the hardener into the clear coat. This will create a very hard clear. If you use 1K, you might have issues later. Make sure you get 2K clear. Oh, and you are using a respirator, right? Because I told you, use a respirator. So something you may notice is how wide the fan is for the spray on this clear coat. That's why I'm starting with the sides. I like doing the sides first and then working my way up to the back of the guitar because the back of the guitar is a much more focal point than the sides are. So I always like to start with the area that isn't gonna be as prominent and then finish on the more prominent part of whatever I'm painting. That's because it's going to be much easier to get a nice finish on the back of the guitar and then do more color sanding and buffing across the sides to smooth it all out. Now every coat of every product I shot on this guitar, I waited anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes in between coats. This is after five coats of clear and this is how it looks when it's all done. 
Now, like I mentioned earlier, in between doing the front of the guitar and the back of the guitar, I wanted to remask my table. And that's because as you're blowing that flake around, some of it could sit on top of the paper and you don't even see it. Then when you go and run your base coat across or anything else really, it could shoot flake or metallic from something else and contaminate the body. So I like to make sure I have a nice clean table to start off with when I go to my next layer. About 22 hours later and the guitar is dry, at least enough to touch, mask, etc., etc. And you'll see there is some overspray on the binding. I'm just gonna scrape that off with an X-Acto knife and clean up the edges how I want them to look. But now it's time to start getting ready to paint the front of the guitar. Now here's a little painter's trick, and that is take your masking tape and put it up against any article of clothing, your shirt, your pants, whatever. As long as it's somewhat kind of clean and not gonna grab hairs and make those stick into the paint. And the reason I do this is because it gets rid of some of the adhesive on the back of this tape and then that allows me to lay this on and not worry as much about the possibility of it pulling paint off when I go to peel the tape. Once I finish masking the binding, then I'll just take some masking paper and tuck it all underneath after I tape it to the masking tape. Now I can wipe it all down and I'm ready to do it all over again. Just this time, gold. Now remember, because the face of this guitar is dry currently, you're going to need a tack coat. If it were primered and left wet, then you could just base coat right over the primer. But because it had to dry first, you have to do a tack coat. Now that the base coat's done, time for more flake. Now with the flake all done, it's time for some gold fashioned candy. Once again, time for clear coat. I do want to remind you, I waited anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes in between each coat. So just because I've sped it up, doesn't mean you can just keep layering over and over and over again. Make sure you wait the 10 to 15 minutes in between each of your coats of every paint you shoot on your guitar.
Now that the body's done, it's time to attack the neck. I'm going to start with this clear gloss polyurethane from Minwax because it's a nice dry finish and you don't feel it going up and down the neck like you would with paint. It's simple to apply, I just put it on a paper towel and rub the back of the neck with it. After a couple hours of drying, I then attacked it with some steel wool and it was time to paint. I then shot the headstock and the heel with my base coat. I also stamped the back of the neck with an AZRB for AZ Rockabilly Bash N001 as it's the first guitar. I then grabbed my metal flake, shot the back of the headstock and the back of the heel leaving the center of the neck dry. I then shot the areas that I covered in flake with my candy using the Tropicali. I then clear coated over the entire neck. I'll now wait 24 hours for it to cure and then I can sand through the spray on clear coat to get back down to that rub on clear coat. And here we have it all done and ready for raffle. A huge thank you to Nikki Flores from Big Shot Sticker Company for knocking out my logo. And here it is on display at the AZ Rockabilly Bash waiting to get raffled.